and uh, good morning everyone and welcome welcome to St Beale's community uh, the Facebook group page for St Peter's Church Recklesham's 10 o'clock live stream Sunday service and um, it's uh, so good to be with everyone and as we gather to reflect on God's word to offer our prayers to sing in praise and to just be in that spirit of unity as we've intentionally come here to think about God's love his hospitality his welcome and his love and how we can receive that in our own hearts and be bearers of that out into the world and today we will be thinking uh, about being called to action called to think about the fields of that are ready for harvest in our own lives in our community and in the world and how we might be able to be part of that so feel free to communicate with each other via the um uh the the comments page uh everything you need is on the service or you can just follow it through without without any words and we thank Jonathan and Naomi as ever for our music today along with St Martin in the Fields Choir and for Paul who is reading and Catherine will lead us in our prayers so that's lovely and we will hold of course all those close to our heart and all the sorrows of the world and all that needs to be lifted into God's care in our prayers but right now at the beginning of our time together let's just pause to think about where we are individually as a community and a world society within the pandemic that it has of course swept the world and ravished our very being So for all those who are suffering through illness and those who have sadly died and all those who mourn and for all caught up in the front line in the leadership and in the scientific investigations we pray for them and for ourselves that we stay safe and we take our own responsibility to do the right thing for our neighbours so we pray, God of compassion, be close to all who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Comfort those who are mourning in the loss of a loved one at this time. Trusting in your promise of eternal life through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory jesus christ our lord amen and as i say we are going to be exploring jesus authorizing and sending disciples which includes us to go and do his work <coughs> excuse me So now we gather as we respond to our call to worship and thanksgiving. Worship God with gladness. Come into his presence and sing his praises. We unite with the whole world in praising you, creator God. We come before you with gladness and thanksgiving. We praise your goodness. We praise your faithfulness. We praise your tenderness. We are yours and we worship you. We bless your name forever. Amen. Loving Lord, your grace draws us to your presence. Your peace unites us in your love. Your hope inspires us to praise your glory. May our worship be worthy of you. Amen. 
and we pray our prayer of approach to our worship time. We come before you, gracious God, just as we are. We come with our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities. We come with our fears and apprehensions. We come with our faith and our doubt. We come to offer and receive. We come to you, the King of love, in the name of your Son and in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Which leads us into that time uh, of penitence, that time where we bring our sorrows, our regrets, and we have that quiet time with the Lord just to reflect on how things have gone for us these past days. Good things, but the things that haven't gone so well, the things we've said or not said that we've done or shouldn't have done and how they've affected other people around us. But we do acknowledge a loving and trusting and merciful God who loves us beyond measure and forgives us even before we ask for it. On behalf of humanity and sometimes of ourselves, we pray. We confess the blindness that is not even aware of its sinning. The pride that dares not admit that it's wrong. The selfishness that can see nothing but its own will. The righteousness that knows no fault. The callousness that has ceased to care the defiance that does not regret its own part in brokenness, the evasion that always tries to make excuses, the coldness of heart that is too hardened to be sorry or to forgive. God, we are broken. Please be merciful to us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Trusting that the Father of all mercies will cleanse us, restore us in his image, will heal us and forgive us. We praise the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray the collect, the gathering prayer of the church for the first Sunday of Trinity, after Trinity. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and in deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And please join me as we affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we come to our first hymn, sung by the choir of St Martin's in the Fields, Christ Be My Waking, which we've had previously of some reflective music. So please feel free to sing with this uh, hymn and then we will go into our first reading.
reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul. And so we come to our first reflection uh, this morning uh, on discipleship. And if I were to ask you, what's your understanding of discipleship? I wonder what your answer would be. How would you define your own discipleship? A recent report says this about just that. It says Jesus calls both men and women to be disciples, to learn from him, to pattern their lives upon his life, to follow him. Disciples are called to a life of learning and formation in the likeness of Christ. Disciples are also called to live a distinctive life of witness and service, and apostolic life sent into the world to follow God's call. A life of sending and gathering. And this life, says the report, is the life that leads to the Great Commission, that beginning with the earliest disciples and continuing with us, we go and we proclaim the good news to the nations in the power of the Holy Spirit by the risen Christ in the name of love. So disciples are called to action. And I don't know about you, but I would say that the greatest role model for this is Jesus himself. Jesus is the most faithful of all disciples to the call of his father, wasn't he? He listened through prayer, paid attention through social engagement in his community, and he acted at the right time in the name of God's call upon him to show the society and power structures of his day how to do justice love mercy and walk humbly with God in an authentic and appropriate manner. Discipleship is a following of Jesus that is spurred on by faith and a conviction to pray to proclaim the gospel, the good news. The doing of discipleship is authenticated, it's made real through prayer the prayer that deepens faith and the faith that can make mountains move in the world metaphorically. The faith-filled prayer shows us more clearly how we can grow in our individual and collective discipleship that then helps us to grow in awareness of God's call on our lives and where we'll be best placed to use our gifts and our skills to be useful and when we're useful, we feel fulfilled. And then we really do come to know that joy of Jesus that is not contingent on whether things are going well or going our way. The joy of the resurrected Jesus 
that abides in us, that lives in us, and whose spirit works through us as we follow the call to go and tell the good news of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We just read Paul's letter to the Romans when a few verses back from what we've just heard, Paul has just explained about how we can become right with God through faith. It's called justification, but the term used there, it's not a legal term as it sounds like, but it, rather it means righteousness, that with the help of God's Holy Spirit, we can endure all kinds of trials and tribulations with dignity and good grace because we believe and trust. And in doing that, we can deepen our relationship with God and with each other. To be holy is to be set apart, to set apart for God. God's holy people nurtured and guided to become proclaimers of the covenant of peace and love and wholeness. But actually, it's where we are called to live out that covenant of peace and love too, in all that we do, intentionally doing what we might do alongside lots of other people, but doing it with the weight of Christ's Holy Spirit behind us, all for the glory of God, responding to the needs of the moment, becoming mobilised to the call of social justice, well-being and peace, but in an appropriate and an authentic way, just like Jesus did. And finally, the lovely thing about discipleship is that we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to get it right all the time. We just have to know that we are loved beyond measure. We can offer our love to Jesus and ask him to show us through the power of his spirit within us where he wants us to be and how he wants us to do what we're called to do and how we can be brave and bold enough to keep going, keep acting in his name, even when we mess up big time. Because nothing is beyond redemption, nothing is beyond repair. And in a world where we are broken through the pandemic and through our own brokenness, what a great message and what a great hope to be a disciple and to be discipled by others in the name of love. And Jonathan and Naomi will sing about just that. Will you come and follow me? And that will be followed by the gospel reading of Matthew. Oh. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff. For labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not for you to speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So some reflection on um, like a sheep without a shepherd. This phrase was used 
in many Old Testament passages to portray God's flock neglected by its shepherd. And we hear today how Jesus feels compassion towards the crowds. And this word that's used is a powerful word. It's not lightweight, like feeling sorry or a little bit of pity, but a deep heart churning emotion, like a blow to the stomach. He really feels for them. The people of the day were confused and angry. They were oppressed and Jesus felt for these lost and marginalised souls. Jesus was making the point that the spiritual leadership from the Pharisees left much to be desired. Instead of offering wise and comforting counsel, rather they insinuated that all the poverty and ails of society were punishment for sins of the people and therefore that they should all be cast aside and they were worth nothing. But Jesus, the good shepherd, on the other hand, looked on in pity and beckoned those who needed comfort and compassion and spiritual healing. Of course, Jesus demonstrated much physical healing, but the ultimate healing at depth would come from a spiritual hunger being nourished by God through Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, we have much medical knowledge and treatments for physical maladies but the sickness of the soul, the aimless pursuit of happiness through wealth and power and prestige, is what Jesus knew then and knows today lies at the heart of the deepest sickness of the world that needs nothing less than the medicine of the gospel, the good news of love to soothe and heal an ailing and broken world. Back then, Jesus went about all the cities and villages we hear, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. It says when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest, to send out labourers into his harvest. And harvest here is a picture language that refers to that place where in the brokenness of the world and the brokenness of hearts lies and where the minds of humanity can be changed, where hearts can be changed when it's harvest time and the labourers of the harvest go and reap it in, where the brokenness of the world can be cast aside to reveal the glory of the kingdom of God. The harvesting of ailing souls, the lost, the lonely, the marginalised, the poor in spirit driven by the material laws of the world. Unlike the visible storms that could be calmed and was calmed by Jesus, the ailments that could be healed these spiritual hungers and fears were invisible. You couldn't see them. But as we said, Jesus knew they were there. And actually, if we all are honest and dig deep, we will know that even within ourselves, we have that spiritual hunger, that spiritual brokenness in one way or the other, in some way or form. But with honesty and courage, and the willingness to be weak, we can find strength and healing and compassion and comfort. All the things we need to be loved well. But the labourers are few. The labourers who can go out with that good news of God's love on their hearts, being called to work for the harvest. But actually notice here that it isn't the most intelligent, the most wealthy or witty or successful people that are being called. It's the common labourer, ordinary people like you and me, being called to live our extraordinary gospel news lives. Disciples being sent out prayerfully, willingly, in the name of Jesus in present times 
that wants to speak into the hearts just like Jesus has spoken into ours. In those that we can meet during this time, this time of our lockdown lives, where we can be encouragers, sharers and carers and loving people in acts of kindness and grace and every act, every word carrying the love of God in the name of Jesus. A love that is sustainable, not fickle, that it lasts. Calling people back into the time of plenty, spiritual plenty. And in a time where we are challenged and confronted by our values of today and also right now, we're being confronted to question the values of our past. And as we reflect on life before lockdown, life now and life to come, don't you think that we are, aren't we, at a crossroads where we can take one road back to the old ways, the old days, or we can continue on to work and labour for a new normal, a more just, inclusive and equitable and courteous and kind society. We have a chance and we have a choice. And you and I have a call to be disciples of the good news of love. So let's ask ourselves this week in our prayers and in our intentions, how we can be labourers of God's harvest of kindness, of healing and wholeness for ourselves, for each other and for the world, our wonderful, beautiful world created by a loving God because he loves us and just asks us to sit and receive that love. Amen. And some music for reflection. Look at the world. Look at this world. Everything all around us. And after that, we will lead straight into our prayers, during which there will be another piece of music that we can prayerfully reflect on and listen and sing if we like. So, with thanks to the choir of St Thomas on the Bourne, look at the world.
after I say faithful shepherd, you may like to join with the refrain, have compassion on your sheep. Let us pray. Great shepherd and redeemer, thank you for freely giving your life for us, even when we had turned our backs. Today we turn to you. We ask that you will help us to receive all that you long to give and to share your gifts with a harassed and helpless world. We pray for the weary, for healthcare workers, for tired parents, teachers and all who have been under stress. Grant them new strength and make us channels of your living water of hope and encouragement. Faithful shepherd, have compassion on your sheep. We uphold national leaders and all in authority. Keep them from pride and folly and guide them into paths of peace and righteousness. In a climate of tension, we pray that your church will overflow with a spirit of repentance, reconciliation and forgiveness. Merciful Shepherd, have compassion on your sheep. We pray for those in a dark valley who cannot see the way ahead, the jobless and financially insecure, young people with shattered dreams. Restore their self-worth and help them discover that you are a God who guides and provides. Prompt us to give generously of all that we have received. And we ask particularly that you would sustain the charities supported by St Peter's Church, Step by Step and Seeds for Development. Gracious Shepherd, have compassion on your sheep. We uphold those known to us who are sick, awaiting or undergoing treatment, the dying and all who mourn. Pour out your peace and healing. Give them comfort and the assurance that you walk beside, behind and before them. Loving Shepherd, have compassion on your sheep. And we pray for ourselves, for Jacqueline, for all who lead and for those who follow, that we may each understand and play our part in rescuing the lost sheep and bringing them home to you. Shepherd Redeemer, companion and defender, we thank you for your Holy Spirit who moves and empowers us Open our hearts and fill us again with your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Catherine, for our beautiful prayers. The John and Naomi leading us so reflectively in that music, beautiful hymn. So notices, there is a Zoom at, uh, coffee after, after the service at 11.15. It would be so lovely just to eat, it doesn't, albeit briefly, you don't have to stay long, just to say hello. It'd be lovely to see faces if you can make that. There's a link on the site. Um, there has been the um, authority to open churches for private prayer. I can report that St Peter's at this present time is to remain closed. We haven't found a way through where we can um, responsibly stay open without considering whether there might be a chance that the virus could linger in some way into the church, uh, in the church uh, when someone might follow another person. So we, we have given it some thought. If we come up with something, we will surely open it. Uh, but we are arranging to have it deep cleaned and ready, prepared for when we do all gather back in. St Thomas on the Bourn are opening up the road there. They are opening their church for private prayer. If you feel that you would like to enter a church building to offer some prayers. But please be assured that God's response to our prayers is not contingent on where we are or what sort of building although it, it is lovely to be in a prayed in sacred space but everything within our heart is sacred the temple is within us and the language of the heart is the prayer that God desires and learn, yearns for and we will be starting an alpha online on the 15th of July, that's very exciting. I will post something on the uh, Facebook page and you'll be able to get more details. But make a note for nine Wednesdays, beginning the 15th of July, it's an hour and a quarter, a, a DVD and a chat. It's very informal. It's a fantastic, fantastic way of exploring big life questions and especially through the lens of Christianity. It's uh, non-judgmental and non-prescriptive. It's about the idea about we are invited to bring ourselves to explore in our own way. So uh, watch that space. We now come to our final hymn. Go forth and tell, O church of God, awake. God's saving news to all the nations take. So, so led by St Martin's Choir. We now sing our final hymn.
Go till all nations his great name adore and serve him, Lord and King for evermore. Go to serve, go to love, go to bring healing, go to bring peace. Go in the strength of the Father, go in the power of Jesus. Go united by the Spirit, go and know his grace. Amen. And we end with the Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships so that you might live deep within your heart. Amen. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom and peace. Amen. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. Amen. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in the world so that we can do what others claimed cannot be done. Amen. We part in peace, in hope and in love. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Bless you all, dear, dear friends. I see some of you on Zoom and I will be holding you all on my heart. And call me anytime, anyone. It'd be lovely to talk to you. God bless you. Bye.